How's it going guys? It's Ryan here and welcome to this next solo guide for beginners. This guide has been designed to take someone who has not done a ton of PVM and show them everything they need to know, the big key points to get themselves a the next skill. But that being said, just watching this guide and then trying it will not guarantee that you get it on your first attempt for obvious reasons. Next is a really difficult boss and it's important to know that practice makes perfect. One last thing that's worth noting in this intro is that there are some very high requirements to solo next. And the reason I've set them so high is because you know you can do next with lower tier gear. It's possible Possible, but it's really really difficult to learn how to solo next on lower tier gear and it can be really frustrating. I have recorded most of the backing footage for this video with a royal crossbow. That's just to say it is definitely possible to do with the lower tier gear, I just wouldn't recommend learning with this lower tier gear. Anyways, without further ado, let's get right into it. The base requirements to fight next are 70 plus ranged, strength, agility, and constitution. That being said, for both this guide and for soloing next, I'd recommend you have 90 plus ranged, 90 plus defense, 67 plus summoning for the war tort, 70 plus prayer, 96 or 91 with a boost herblore for overloads, a sharpshooter aura, some form of void armor, preferably superior elite, and a tier 80 ranged weapon like a royal crossbow. Although I recorded most of the backing footage for this video with a royal crossbow, I'd strongly recommend if you have an extra 15 mil to spare, putting in the money and getting yourself some shadow glaives because they are going to make your kills a lot smoother. If you're missing some or all of the recommendations, feel free to try solo, and if it doesn't go well, just go to a duo. It's really, really easy to duo next, especially if you know all the proper strategies. I've personally done it with tier 75 gear, so you should not have a problem. Here's a little bit of information about Nex. Nex has a combat level of 1001, has 200,000 life points, is poisonous, has a max hit of 4,000 with a regular attack, and over 8,000 with a special attack, and is weak to nothing. Now, despite having no weakness, when you make an instance at Nex, the first kill, Nex will always be praying against magic, so you will not be able to use magic in your first kill every trip. Now, because you're only doing one kill trips, this means that every single time you enter the instance, Nex will be praying against magic, which is why we're going to be using ranged. To access Nex's encampment, you need a frozen key. You get this frozen key by killing creatures from the encampments of each of the four God Wars dungeon bosses. The key gets dropped in four pieces, and then once you combine it, you'll have a frozen key. It's also really important to bring a set of ancient ceremonial armor. It costs about 170k in the GE, and if you're wearing all five pieces of the set, you can skip your kill count. This saves a ton of time, especially since you'll be banking between every single next solo you do. To get to next, get to God Wars Dungeon 1, run south, open the frozen door, climb down the stairs, and then run east. If you're wearing five pieces of ancient ceremonial, you should be able to pass through the door, no problem. When you get to next bank, it's time to gear. There are two main ways to kill Nex. The first way is to use your Void the entire kill, and the second way is to bring a Power Armor switch and switch to your Power Armor after the second phase. I've done about 100 Nex solos with each of these strategies, and it's really up to personal preference what you'd like to do. For this guide, I'm going to be switching to Power Armor. It's very important not to forget an all-type cape as well as melee boots. I'd recommend a skill cape as well as Bando's boots. The reason for this is if you do not have enough melee armor on, you will get put into melee distance on Shadow Phase, and you'll get a really, really bad bleed. It will absolutely ruin your kill. It's also really important to bring ranged boots in your invent to switch to after shadow phase. In every single beginner guide on my channel, I will tell you to bring a sign of life because it could save you, but in this case, I actually don't want you to bring a sign of life. If you've got 99 divination, feel free to bring a portent of life, but you do not want a sign of life because what's going to make or break your kill is damage per second. For that reason, it's much more effective to have either a god book or a scrimshaw. So as you can see, I've got my void set up equipped, I've got my aura, I've got my scrimshaw, I've got my melee boots and my all type cape. In my invent, I have power armor, although this is completely optional. Now the one other really important thing to have is a shield. You absolutely need one, and I would strongly recommend bringing a defender. I'll talk about it a little later, but that is your best option if you have a tier 70, 80, or 90 defender. A defender over a shield isn't going to make or break your kill, but it is really nice to have, and I'll talk about that when I get into ice phase. When you're gearing for your first next skill, it's important to view food as room for error. As someone who's done a lot of necks, I can now go with one brew and sharks for the rest of it and I'll be just fine to get my kills. When you're learning a new boss, you have a tendency to make some little mistakes. The better food you bring, the more mistakes you'll be able to make before you lose your kill. That's why in this learner setup, I'm using a lot of brews and I also have rock tails instead of sharks. My B.O.B. is also full of rock tails. One other thing that's worth doing is getting a bonfire boost. How you do this is you light a log and then you add five more logs to it. This will boost your maximum hit points. Okay, so now that you know about Nex and you know what gear to bring, let's talk about the actual boss fight. Let's talk about the phases and what to do for each one. The first phase is Smoke Phase. 
Next, we'll use smoke spells that can poison you. The poison hits low, but if you want to counteract it, drink an anti-poison before you go in. Next up, there's the there is no escape attack. Next can slam you for over 4,000 damage if you stand in the center lanes of the Zaro symbol. Really, really easy to avoid this one, just don't stand there. The next attack is the drag attack. Next, we'll drag you into melee distance, stun you, disable your protection prayers, and then hit you. If you don't want to get dragged at all, keep anticipation up. If you do get dragged, use freedom, use resonance, and then run back out of melee distance. Next, we'll attack with magic attacks for the duration of smoke phase. Before the next kill starts is a really good way to get yourself some free adrenaline. Equip your shield and attack Fumus, and then you can run through some of your defensives, like Resonance, Preparation, Escape, Freedom, and then Anticipation. By this point, Nex is going to be almost on you, so you're going to want to equip your bow, pot up, make sure your Aura and Scrimshaw are on, and then begin attacking Nex. Now, it's important to stay out of that middle column as I am right now. I'm just out of range of the There's attack, but if you're not sure, you can just wrap Nex around this corner. You're going to see the There's attack in just a second, but until then, you just want to build up the thresholds and run some thresholds on Nex. Here we go, there is, and because I'm not in the middle column, it's not going to hit me at all. It's actually not going to affect me whatsoever. And then Nex is going to run back at me and just resume attacking. It's also really, really helpful to walk your bleed. So if you're ever using a fragmentation shot, it's really, really helpful just to walk Nex a square so it does increase damage. That's really all there is to the first phase of Nex. At 160,000 life points, Nex will say Fumus, don't fail me, and you'll be able to attack the minion Fumus. Now, for all the minions in the Nex fight, there's a damage cap on them, so they can't be hit by large amounts of damage at one time. So using an ability like Bombardment would be totally useless. That being said, the ability Rapid Fire as well as your bleeds are very, very good at getting the minion down quickly. And you've done it. That's the end of first phase. All right, now we're gonna get into shadow phase. The first ability is the Fear the Shadow attack. A shadow trap will spawn underneath you dealing 3000 plus damage. To avoid this, you need to move a square to negate all of the damage. So yeah, here's an example of what that looks like if it hits you. As you can see, I was clicking, but I had a little bit of a lag spike and instantly dead. All right, this next mechanic we've already covered a little bit, but it's the melee bleed attack. Next will bleed anyone within melee distance 500 plus damage every single game tick. So that's every 0.6 seconds. If you're wearing void, which is type all armor, and you have an all type cape with melee boots, you have more melee armor on than anything else. And because of that, next won't ever go into melee distance. For the duration of shadow phase, next will use ranged attacks. Alright, so after the first phase, once the minion's dead, you tag the boss. Now, if you have soul split, you can soul split for a minute here because Nex will not attack you, and all you want to do is just lay down as much damage as you can. Whenever Nex says embrace darkness, that's a good time to start praying range because Nex will start attacking with ranged. And yeah, that's really all there is to shadow phase. It's a really, really easy phase as long as you're actually avoiding the shadow spots properly. If you don't avoid them, they can hit you really high, so I would recommend eating at least over 5,000 hit points just in case you get comboed out. And that's actually it with shadow phase. Once next says Umbra don't fail me, run up to this eastern corner and start attacking Umbra. All right, it's time for the dreaded blood phase. This is the phase that most people lose their kills on. This is where it can really get way out of hand and your blood phase can end up looking like this. Just about every guide I've seen doesn't actually explain how blood phase actually works, how the mechanics work, and it's really important to understand the mechanics so you can figure out the best way to counteract it based on the gear you're using and your ability to do good DPS. What most people will tell you about blood phase is that what you want to do is you want to do either a death swiftness or an onslaught right at the start, and then you want to get it down in one siphon before next heals up all the way back to full again. The main problem with this is people who don't have as good DPS rotations won't be able to do it because they'll try and do as much DPS as they can in the first siphon, and then all of a sudden Nex is going to heal up again, and a couple siphons later, Nex is going to be at 200,000 hit points back at the start, and you're going to have no idea what happened. With that in mind, let's talk about how Blood Phase will actually ruin your next kill. First off, Nex will attack with Blood Spells. These heal her a small amount every time she hits you with one. It's like 500 to 800 hit points. It's not a big deal. Next up, we've got a Siphon will solve this. For the duration of the Siphon, any damage Nex takes will actually heal her instead of doing damage to her. Additionally, she will spawn two Blood Reavers. Both of them have 7,600 life points, and at the end of the rotation, Nex will heal 100% of their remaining life points. Next off, you've got the I Demand a Blood Sacrifice. You're gonna glow red and be hit for 10% of your maximum life points. Next will also heal 100% of your maximum life points at the end of the rotation. And next will basically just go through that rotation over and over and over again. And if Nex is healing more damage than you're doing to Nex, you'll find out pretty quickly that Nex is gonna be at 180, 190, and then back at 200,000 life points, and you're gonna have to lobby or die. All that might seem really scary, but it's actually not scary at all. It's really easy. If you can do more damage than Nex is healing, 
in any given rotation, you're actually making progress towards finishing the blood phase. What does that mean? Well, it means that if you do not get hit by the sacrifice attack, Nex won't heal off that. And also, if you kill the blood reavers, Nex won't heal off them either. So that means that Nex will keep going through the rotation over and over again without healing anything. This means that if you can kill the blood reavers and you can make sure you're properly avoiding the blood sacrifice attack, which is very easy to avoid, any damage you do, even if it's only 5,000 or 10,000 damage every rotation, is progress towards finishing the blood phase. This is a perfect example off the start of Blood Phase. I'm gonna make sure to get Protect from Magic active and I'm gonna do my boot switch. This is also where you'd switch your armor. Now I'm gonna tag next and I'm gonna attack the Reavers. The reason I'm gonna attack the Reavers and I'm actually gonna use thresholds on the Reavers is because as soon as they're dead, Nex doesn't have a way to heal at the end of the rotation. That means that at this point, it doesn't matter how much damage I do to Nex, any damage I do at this point is gonna be free damage that won't get healed back at the end. As you can see, there's the Blood Sacrifice. Best way to get out of that is to surge or escape. It'll auto dodge it. And then I just keep doing damage to Nex. It's also important to note that you cannot use any bleeds on Nex. You can bleed the Reaver, but don't bleed Nex because that will also make a heal. And there we go, another siphon happened, but as you can see, Nex's hit points did not rise at all at the end of that rotation. Now, obviously this is an exaggerated example, and in this case it would take me probably five siphons to get through the blood phase, which is a lot. But here's the other thing, I intentionally have full adrenaline at the start and I'm not using an ultimate ability. You should be using ultimates, you should definitely be throwing down a death swift, it will help a ton, but also I just wanted to exaggerate it and say, look, I'm doing it with a tier 80 and I'm also not using any ultimates at all and I'm still managing to get it down. If you get rid of the ways that Nex can heal off a blood phase, it's really easy. It doesn't matter how low your DPS is, as long as you can kill those reavers and you can dodge the blood Blood sacrifice because Nex won't be healing it back. So anyway, that's the main theory behind Blood Phase, and if you don't have very good DPS or you're not using high-tiered gear, then that's a really good way to get it done, is just get rid of the Reavers and then whittle down the rest of the HP. Now, although the way I've just described is the most consistent way to get through Blood Phase every single time, it's not recommended if you have high damage per second and you want to really get into soloing Nex. If you really want to get into it, you want to try and get yourself a 1 Siphon or at worst a 2 Siphon. So here's how to do that. First off, this is a way I would not recommend. This is the total brainless onslaught method. You eat up to full hit points, you wait for the siphon to end, and then you use onslaught, and that's it. If you've got an enhanced Excalibur, feel free to use that. And you'll see right here, I'm gonna get it down in one siphon. I'm not even gonna bother dodging the blood sacrifice. All I'm gonna do is keep going with my onslaught. Now, there's nothing wrong with using onslaught on blood phase, but the reason I don't recommend going entirely brainless on it is there's a lot that can go wrong. If you take too much damage and you have to end your onslaught early, then you're gonna be stuck with no adrenaline, no hit points, and then next will be healing. So for that reason, I'd recommend doing one of two things. First thing you're watching right now is you can actually attack a Reaver while Nex is siphoning. What you're going to do to that Reaver is actually going to put a bleed on that Reaver, and that way while you're attacking Nex, the bleed is doing damage to the Reaver, and most likely you'll get the Reaver partially dead or completely dead. This means that if you don't get it in one siphon, Nex isn't going to heal back nearly as much HP. The second thing you can choose to do that can help your blood phase go a little more smoothly is actually use the snipe ability. How the snipe ability works is it basically charges up for 2 seconds and then unleashes a bolt that does high damage, usually 3 to 5 thousand damage. What you can do is you can actually charge it up while Nex is siphoning, and if you time it properly, the siphon will end just as the bolt actually hits Nex. This is a really good way to get some extra damage out. Whether you're using Onslaught or Death Swiftness to get through Blood Phase, those are some tips that should help you out. Now, we're going to talk about Ice Phase. From a technical standpoint, Ice Phase is a lot easier than Blood Phase. Honestly, Blood Phase is the most difficult phase by far. That being said, Ice Phase does pose the greatest threat and you will absolutely get killed by it at some point. The first and most dangerous mechanic in the entire Nex skill is the Ice Prison. Nex will freeze you and drop your protection prayers and it will be hit between 6,000 and 8,000 typeless damage as well as a regular magic attack. To avoid this, you want to use Freedom, equip your shield or defender, use Resonance, or Barricade. It's important to note that while you're under the stun, you will not be able to eat food, and that is why it's so important that you bring at least a couple brews just for this phase. The main trick to surviving an ice prison is to keep your hit points high. Here's a perfect example of what not to do. My resonance was stuck on cooldown and so was my freedom. So I got stunned by this ice prison and I'm drinking my brew but I can't eat anything else. I get my hit points up to 9500 and I still get dropped. And that's why it's so important to have either a resonance, a reflect, or a barricade available to you. When I was talking about what gear to bring, I said that you should bring a defender over a regular shield. The reason for this is a defender has a 1 in 15 chance of reducing an attack by between 50 and 100%. As you can see right here, you're about to get it in my chat box, but the ice prison attack even though it's typeless, got reduced by 5,287 damage. That's really, really big when it procs, and it can really help you save your food. I'm going to briefly touch on the contain this. 
Next, we'll shoot a stalagmite at you that will deal 3,500 damage if you're close to Nex, and around 1,700 damage if you're far away. This one's really easy to avoid. All you need to do is run away from the stalagmite. All right, here's a slightly sped up ice phase. As you can see, there's a contain this coming towards me, but I'm far enough away that it's not gonna hit me. Now there's an ice prison, so what I've done is I use freedom, I use resonance, and I'm good. That way I don't get comboed out by that second hit. Remember, it's really important to keep your hit points high, and throughout this phase, you'll see me eating very, very high. Also remember to walk your bleeds. That's really important as well. Whenever you use a fragmentation shot, it's nice to actually walk next because you'll get the phase done a lot quicker. Also, you should be able to use resonance every single time just because of the cooldown. It should be just enough that you can use it every single time you get prizzed. But if it ever is on cooldown, remember that you can also use reflect. Now, I did actually get hit by that contain because I was focusing on the minion. That's a mistake. It's not a big deal. Just make sure your hit points are high enough and you won't get dropped by anything. And there you go, you just continue the same thing, you kill the minion, and then as soon as you tag up on Nex, you'll be into Zaros phase, which is the last phase. During the Zaros phase, Nex will have increased damage and accuracy, and will also be able to use Protect from Melee, Protect from Magic, as well as Soul Split. For this reason, it's important to have good damage per second, and it's really good to start off Zaros phase with a Death Swiftness. As Nex dies, she will hit anyone nearby for between 2,000 and 5,000 damage. Whenever Nex dies, you want to run away. Alright, Zaros phase is the fifth and final phase. What you want to do for Zaros phase is you want to start off with a Death Swiftness, just build up to full Adren and do that. If you can Adren pot as well, that's going to help too. And like I said in the last phase, you want to make sure you're walking your bleeds whenever you can. Always walk your fragmentation shot because that'll help quite a bit as well. This phase is really straightforward. All you got to do is lay down as much damage as you can and make sure you don't get killed. Next can hit deceptively high about 2500 with melee and can also hit you over 2000 with magic through your prayer. If you find that you're really getting combat out by Zara's phase you can feel free to use either a debilitate or a devotion and that will help just a little bit. Other than that a lot of people like to quickly flip to a rezo just to get a little 1 to 2000 heal and that's always a really good strategy as well. Once you get to the end of Zaros phase, that's the end of your next skill. Just remember to stay away from the Taste My Wrath, and you're going to be good to go. As I like to do in my guides, I'm going to be walking you guys through one entire kill, start to finish, no cuts, no nothing, just so you can see how everything meshes together. So let's do it. All right, here is a next kill. I'm not going to repeat myself and say the exact same things I said during the actual guide for each specific phase, but I will add some additional tips and little tricks that I felt weren't worth mentioning or teaching because they can be kind of complicated early on, but are also really nice to do and worth doing. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use Fragmentation Shot, and then I'm going to step to that square back there. What that's going to do is that's going to force Nex to run around the corner, which is going to make the Frag Shot do even more damage. That's just a nice little trick to run your bleeds a little more easily than having to walk under Nex and dealing with potentially getting hit by a melee attack. Now the next little thing that I'm going to do here that I didn't really talk about in the actual guide is I'm going to use an anticipation right here. That's just so that I can't get pulled in. Now this is probably a really good time to mention this, but I didn't take this kill because it was the perfect kill. That's just totally unrealistic. I took this kill because I actually made a lot of mistakes, especially early on, and the first one happens right here with me getting pulled. And just like I said, all you got to do is use freedom and then use resonance and then run out of MD and you're good to go again. And anyway, that's the end of the minion. I finish off the minion and then we're going to get right into shadow phase. Once Shadow Phase starts, what you can do is you can actually Soul Split for just a minute. If you don't have Soul Split, this isn't important at all. It's not going to make or break your kill in any significant way. It's just a nice little trick to save a little bit of food, probably like less than one full food. But, uh, you know, if you're not getting attacked, you're not taking any damage in the first place, there's no reason not to. Now, I don't even know what happened here, but I ended up switching my action bars, which is just perfect. And yeah, anyway, it just continues. And as long as you're dodging the shadow spots, it's really smooth sailing. Shadow phase should not take very long. Even with a royal crossbow, it doesn't matter what you're using. It will go by pretty quickly regardless. Now I'm surging over to the minion. I'm going to kill the minion and I'm going to get ready for blood phase. So you're going to see that as I kill the minion, I'm going to start getting ready to switch my gear. I've got all my gear pieces right next to each other just for that quick body switch. And once I've tagged up, I switch my prayers and I switch my gear and I'm good to go. Now I'm tagging a reaver and then I'm using Onslaught. I'm using Onslaught because that's personally my preferred way to solo Nex and do Blood Phase. And as you can see in just a second here, I'm going to get Blood Sacrificed and I'm going to escape it to avoid that. Now, the thing I like about Onslaught is it can almost every single time get Nex under 90k hit points. And then if you don't get it in the first Siphon, you'll always get it in the second Siphon. As you can see there, Nex really quickly said, Kuror, don't fail me. So now we can head over to Kuror and attack. Now, just like I said earlier, because of the damage cap on the minions, it's really good to throw your bleeds on the minions and then you can use Rapid Fire if you'd like to. In this case, I didn't even need to because my Aftershock perk went off. And the other thing is sometimes Nex will just get lost in a random corner of the room, just run back and attack Nex. And it's time for Ice Phase. Now, it's worth mentioning if you really hate Ice Prisons, 
happens, you can wait for Nex to blood sacrifice you. Once Nex blood sacrifices you, if you tag up after that, you'll actually get a contain this before an ice prison. So that is worth doing if you really don't like the ice prisons. What you're watching me do right now is actually run Nex. I'm doing this for two reasons. First off, I'm in melee distance and I don't particularly want that. And the second reason is so that I can get increased damage from my fragmentation shot. And that's how I did so much damage in such a short amount of time. You're going to see contain this that just happened and now there's going to be one more ice prison. This is actually the clip I took where my defender procced, but even if it hadn't, I'm on high enough hit points and I've used resonance and that's the safest way to go about it. So anyway, once I get it to 40k, I'm going to get on the minion. Glacies don't fail me. I'm going to do the same thing I've done with the minions all the way up to this point, which is use my bleeds and then use a rapid fire just to get it down. And it's really important to get this minion down quickly because next could still ice prison you and your resonance could actually get broken by the minion and you could get killed that way. Anyway, once we've tagged up, Zara's phase starts, and you guys know exactly what to do for Zara's phase. It's just all about doing some damage. So we're gonna pop out a Death Swiftness, and then we're gonna be good to go. And that's really all there is to it. Just go through your regular Death Swiftness rotation, and just make sure you're not getting totally combat out. Like I said in the video, if you really need to, use a Devo or use a Debilitate. And just as a rule of thumb, keep your hit points above 3,000. That's really all there is to the next solo. There's really not much to it. It just does take a little bit of practice, because you know, every phase is unique in its own way, and it can be a little bit overwhelming at first. If you're going for your first next solo, and you've never done it in a larger team or anything, you know, expect that it might take you a couple practices. But anyway, that kill took around 4 minutes and 55 seconds, taste my wrath, and the kill is confirmed. And as you can see there, I didn't even touch my familiar at all, didn't touch my war tortoise, and that's how easy it can be once you know what you're doing. Okay, so now we know how to solo next, but why would you want to? You'd want to solo Nex because Nex has some of the best consistent drops in the entire game. On top of dropping Pernix, Virtus, and Torvagir items that are worth between 5 and 22 mil apiece, and very frequently dropping 375 Onyx Bolts E, they're also really really high valued average drops. Nex is one of the best consistent moneymakers in the entire game for this reason, and every drop you can expect to get between 300 and 600k. Nex also has a pet that's dropped in the form of a blood soaked feather, and can also drop the ancient emblem which is the piece needed to make a tier 80 defender. The ancient emblem can only be dropped if you have a tier 70 defender either equipped or in your invent. Anyway guys, that's gonna just about do it for this guide. As always, if anyone has questions about anything, either content featured in the guide or questions on what to gear or if something's not working out too well, just let me know in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Anyway guys, hopefully this helps you solo some necks, have a great one, good luck, and peace out.